welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve problems using superposition theorem. Okay, uh, before going to any topic, all we need to question is what is it, why do we need it and how to do it, right? So what is superposition theorem actually? Uh, as you can find in any standard textbook, the superposition theorem can be explained in this way. In any linear active bilateral network, consisting of number of energy sources and resistances the effect produced in any single element when all the sources act at a, at a time is equal to the sum of effects produced in the same element when each source is considered individually okay so what the theorem states is uh, suppose consider this circuit you have uh, many number of resistances and you have three sources right suppose if they are if you are asked to find out the current in this 5 ohm resistance the current is due to this source this source and this source also that is all three sources combinedly uh, uh, drive some current through this uh, 5 ohm resistance so what this superposition theorem states is that suppose if i take off these two sources and uh, like calculate the current in this uh, branch through uh, due to the 16 volts in the first case and then i'll take off these two voltage sources i mean these two energy sources and then i current find the current through this 5 ohm resistance due to this 8 amps and in the third case i will take off uh, these two energy sources and uh, if I find the current through this 5 ohms due to this 16 amps and I'll if I combine all those currents that is all, from all the three cases the resultant will be the same as the current which is produced due to all voltage so, uh, all energy sources represent combinedly okay so this is the theorem and uh, if you do the problems it becomes easier to understand and why do we need the superposition theorem? We have mesh analysis, we have nodal analysis, which are pretty easier to solve the problems. But why do we need, uh, go for superposition theorem? Yes, uh, though superposition theorem is rigorous method uh, in when in few cases, uh, but still it is uh, very helpful in solving few uh, type of problems. Uh, you'll be knowing as you go on solving different kind of problems. That is when you have more number of sources in the circuit, then it becomes complex to apply uh, the mesh analysis and all. Like uh, if you have, uh, that is if you have more number of meshes or if you have more number of nodes uh, in the circuit, then it becomes very difficult to write more number of equations uh, like Suppose if you have uh, four to five meshes in a circuit and you are having three energy sources, then superposition theorem becomes easier because uh, superposition the in superposition theorem, the number of equations to be solved is equal to the number of uh, energy sources. Uh, that is, uh, you solve the problem in terms of sub-circuits. That is, the number of sub-circuits will be equal to the number of independent sources present in the circuit. So, in that case, superposition theorem becomes uh, useful and uh, we have learned what it is and we have learned why it is useful and let us know, uh, let us learn how to do it. Okay, so simple, uh, in superposition theorem, all you need to do is when considering one energy source, you just need to de-energize the energy source. Okay. What is de-energize? De-energizing means taking out the energy that is making its value zero. That is, if you consider a voltage source, then um, make V is equal to zero. What is V equals to zero? It means sh simply short-circuiting the branch. It means this is the branch, you need, just need to short-circuit this. Suppose if it is current source, that is make i is equal to 0 that means what is i equals to 0 means open circuit that is in open circuit the current is 0 right so just open circuit okay open circuit the branch simple so this is the main thing you just need to keep in mind now uh, you have to solve this problem in three steps because we have three independent sources the number of sub circuits depends upon the number of independent sources just like i told before so uh, since we have three okay 
since we have three independent sources in the circuit we need to solve this problem in three steps so in step one okay what you need to do is um, in step number one I am considering this voltage source and I am taking off these two uh, I am de-energizing these two energy sources so how la, so this is how the circuit looks one two this is 5 and I'm op I have open circuited this one and again this 3, 4 and again this is open circuit so it doesn't matter so you can cancel out these two and the current and the current uh, that we need to find out is see I'm taking it as I1 in the uh, first sub circuit so what is the current to I1 how can we find it this is um, 16 ohms right so it is just write the equation for this one minus 16 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1 that is 8 i1 equals to 0 i1 is equals to 2 okay just keep it aside now again uh, step 2 that is uh, sub circuit 2 now I am uh, de-energizing this source and this source and uh, I am just considering this 8 amperes. The circuit looks like this. I am short circuiting this, this branch. Okay. This is 1, 2, 5, 3 and 8. And this becomes open circuit so just leave it and I need to find out the current in this let us take it as I2 okay so if you can uh, if you observe this circuit it is like this uh, you can redraw this circuit 3 in series with 8 and these two are in parallel with 2 and this 2 is pa in parallel with uh, these two 5 plus okay this is 5 and this is 1 and the current through this I 5 ohm resistance is what we need so uh, it's like this is uh, 6 you can this is 6 ohms right and you can apply the current division rule the current uh, through this branch is uh, 8 8 amperes right because the current source and the current through this uh, 5 ohms is I2 is equals to the total current into opposite resistance by total resistance 2 plus 5 plus 1 that is 8 into 2 by 8 that is uh, 2 amperes again okay just keep it aside now again this third sub circuit that is uh, in this case I am considering this current source and I am just taking off these two okay so what happens short circuit so uh, this is how the circuit looks like and if you simplify this much more uh, it will look like this and I have considered uh, the current in this 5 ohm resistance in this direction. Make a note that in, while solving the superposition theorem, direction of the current in that specific element must be considered in the same direction in all the sub-circuits. That is, in step 1, it is in downward direction. In the step 2, in the, it is in the downward direction. And in the step 3 also, the current direction must be in downward direction. Okay. Now, uh, while applying by applying the current division rule again i3 will be in this way i3 if i take it in this way uh, say it, it is this it is in the opposite direction if i consider the current like this so i am taking a minus sign okay so it will be like total current into opposite resistance by total resistance so it is uh, minus 6 amperes right so i3 is equals to minus 6 so now the basic thing what is 
so here comes our superposition theorem uh, that is the current through this 5 ohm resistance when all the energy sources is pre are present and all the energy sources are present is equal to the sum of the currents uh, when each energy source is considered individually that is now the current through that uh, i uh, the current through that 5 ohm resistance is equals to i1 plus i2 plus i3 that is 2 plus 2 plus minus 6 that is minus 2 amperes it means that is we have considered the current direction in 5 ohm resistance in this direction but we have got the negative 2 amperes that means originally the current through this 5, amp, uh, 5 ohm resistance is in this way and its magnitude is 2 amperes okay so this is how we find the current uh, using superposition theorem and then comes the type 2 problems in superposition theorem that is if you have a dependent source in the circuit what you need to do yes if you have an independent source you are de-energizing it but how can you de-energize a dependent source then comes the main problem you need not worry about that you shouldn't uh, do anything to the dependent source just proceed with the independent sources just like how you did in the previous case that is in the first case de-energize one energy source and uh, in the second case de-energize the other one okay so so in the first step i am considering this 5 ampere circuit and i am de-energizing this so here goes the circuit The dependent source remains untouched and I'm short circuiting the voltage source. Okay. And in this question, they have asked to find out the current in this 3 ohm resistance. So I'm considering this as I1. Okay. This is 1, this is 5. Um, so I'll write the mesh equation for this. It is. Um, minus vx plus uh, 5 because 5 amps is flowing through this 1 ohm 5 into 1 5 uh, here uh, I here I cannot write the mesh equation because I don't know the voltage this 2 vx is the current flowing through this branch just uh, uh, observe this is not the voltage don't get confused and so I am writing the super mesh so it is uh, plus 3i 1 is equal to 0 and uh, what is this I1? I1 is equals to the current uh, sum of these two currents that is 5 plus 2Vx, right? So I'm substituting here. It is uh, minus Vx plus 5 plus 3 into 5 plus 2Vx is equal to 0. So what it is 6 minus 5, 6 minus 1 that is 5Vx plus 20 equals to 0 so vx is equals to minus 4 volts and uh, the i1 that is i1 can be found out it is 5 plus 2 into minus 4 is minus 8 that is minus 3 amperes okay and in the second sub circuit i am considering this 20 volts and i am de-energizing this 5 amps then it becomes open circuit right so this doesn't matter whatever its whole uh, its value is and this is 2vx and this is 3 this is 20 okay so the current through this is i2 okay now the voltage across this uh, current source is Vx because uh, the current is not flowing through this branch so there is no voltage drop across this resistance so the voltage uh, as they have told it is plus Vx so it comes the same here now the equation for this is minus Vx plus 3i2 plus 20 is equal to 0 and i2 is equals to 2Vx and Vx is equals to i2 by 2 or some anything so just substitute it here minus vx plus 3 into 2 is 6 vx plus 20 equals to 0 and you are getting vx is equal to 
minus 4 volts and I2 is equals to minus 8, 8 amperes, right? So now the current through this uh, 3 ohm resistance is the sum of this I1 and I2 that is I1 is equals to minus 3 plus minus 8, minus 8 that is minus 11 amperes that is the current is flowing in this direction and its magnitude is 11 amperes. So this is how we need to solve the problems using superposition theorem and uh, uh, hope you have understood the concept and if you have any doubts just comment down in the comment section and if you like this video and if you feel it is interesting or helpful just give a thumbs up and uh, share it with your friends and for more kind of these videos uh, subscribe to my channel and stay tuned thank you for watching